What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today, we're looking at the Ben Romick 21. Stick around. All right, so we're getting a little bit fancy today. We're looking at a Ben Romick, which if you watch this channel, you'll know I'm a huge fan of. I love their house style. I think they're very unique. The whiskey has a little bit of farminess in it, a little bit of peat. We usually have some big sherry. Uh, I love what they do, and I'm excited because we've got the 21 with us today. Now, this one's actually the last of their aged core range for me to try. I've done the 10, I've done the 15. I've also done a couple of their cast strength expressions. They have the 2009 vintage. They have the 12 year old, which is a Taiwan exclusive. They did recently put out the 2010 vintage of their cast strength. That's another one that I will have to try eventually. So I have tried a lot of them, but I haven't tried all of them. There's a few that just aren't available in my market. Most of those are going to be their non age stated expressions. Uh, I believe they're usually called contrasts. I know there's a peat smoke in there. There's an organic and they put out a new one recently. It's a limited edition called I think it's called Cara Gold or something. All ones I would love to try, but I can't find them. But yeah, really anything with the Ben Romick name on it is probably something I want to try. I do have a lot of faith in them as a brand. I've literally enjoyed everything they've put out over the last few years, obviously to like varying degrees. But yeah, really cool house style. Again, huge fan of the brand. Anyway, back to our bottle here. This one is entirely matured in first fill bourbon and first fill sherry. It's the oldest and it's naturally the most expensive from their standard core range. And yeah, I mean, it should be a good one. So let's not waste time. Let's jump into our review, see what our whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Annoyingly, Ben Romick doesn't usually give us great specs with their standard core range, and that applies here. So our ABV on this one comes in at 43%. It is going to be chill filtered. Luckily, our color is natural, so we've got one out of three. Guys, we can do better than that. Nice natural color here. It's not quite as dark as the 15 year old. As for the bottle, we have our standard Ben Romick Soviet look. It's not something that I find particularly special. I think it's okay. Presentation score, let's do three and a half out of five. We've got some tasting notes down here and it tells us exclusively matured in first fill casks. We also have some great markety language in here, stuff like handcrafted, hand filled, traditional, family owned, all of these really quaint warming words that marketing departments think we love. Um, yeah, I don't know. Overall, the bottle's fine. I did not add water. Let's try our nose. Right away, I find there's like a nice balance to this. This, it feels less sherry forward than other Ben Romix. Like I'm getting a stronger bourbon influence right off the bat. We definitely get the age, we get the oak from this. So dates, dates and honey, uh, raisins. Uh, it's a very light honeyed note that we get in this. We have sugar cane, we have cinnamon, we have some leather, we have some chocolate, milk chocolate to be more specific. Uh, we also have some herbal components in here and a little bit of like this savory kind of umami type note. This is pretty complex. Now our palate. Mm. All right, uh, those savory umami type notes are back. Getting like Chinese ribs and hoisin sauce. Um, a little bit of peat in there, definitely some leather, some chocolate, some earth, some roasted malt. There's also dates, there's coffee, there's a bit of incense, and we have some like exotic spices in here. Interesting. And now our finish. Okay, we're back with those Chinese ribs in hoisin sauce. Um, I know that there's no port in this or port finish or port casks used in this, but port, um, incense, 
leather, uh, orange oil, milk chocolate, there's licorice, there's roasted malt. A lot of this is just a continuation of the palette. Uh, finish is short to medium. All right, so I think this is really cool stuff. I'm glad that I tried it, and not just because it caps off the last of my age-stated core range reviews. Now, this is a genuinely interesting and unique Ben Romick. There's a big contrast between this and a lot of their younger expressions. Uh, we still get the Ben Romick DNA in there, but it's not the profile I was expecting. I guess I was probably expecting a little bit more sherry to this and maybe a touch more peat as well. Uh, of course, peatiness, smokiness does get more toned down the older whiskey gets. So maybe no big surprise there. Uh, for me, the surprise player in this was those like umami savory notes that I mentioned in the tasting notes. I talked a lot about like Chinese ribs in hoisin sauce. It's a pretty prominent flavor in this whiskey and it's really unique. It's really interesting. I don't think I've ever tasted a flavor quite like that in a whiskey, which is cool. Uh, and another thing that really jumped out at me in this stuff was the, uh, the port flavor in the finish, which is weird. I mentioned earlier this is exclusively matured in first fill sherry and first fill bourbon casks. Now, of course, there isn't some kind of like mystery, undisclosed port influence to this, but I definitely get like a port type note in here. It's like these light berry notes and some milk chocolate. So yeah, this whiskey is a bit of an oddity to me. We have an unexpected profile, some unexpected flavors in here, but I do like it. I think it's delicious stuff. We get the age, we get the maturity, we get the oak, and we have the unmistakable Benromic profile albeit a little bit different here. So of course our next big question is where do I land on this stuff? Is it worth it? How does it compare to the other Ben Romics from the line? Uh, and I'll start by saying that this is not my favorite Ben Romic. Uh, I think it's delicious. It's very unique. It's arguably the most unique from the line, but from a perspective of just like visceral enjoyment, I do prefer the 15. The 15 is going to be my favorite from the brand. I feel like our sherry is more lush in that one. I feel like the peat and the house style are more pronounced. The 21 is great, but I just like where the 15's at with like the distillate, the cast, the cast play, the timing, something lined up perfectly for the 15 and I just enjoy it more. Uh, but the 21, tell you what, if you're the type of person who seeks out age and the complexity that we get with age, you should like this one. It is more complex. So my score for this one is going to be 86. For context, I give the 15 year old a 90. I also much prefer the 10 and the 12 year old cast strength. So within the range, I don't think this one is particularly competitive. Uh, and I do realize this is going to be a lot of people's favorite. Uh, we do have that added complexity that comes from the age and we do have some really unique flavors. I think those Chinese ribs, hoisin sauce notes are super cool, but they're no match for the lushness and the roundness that we get with the 15. Uh, I think this whiskey is good, but it's less fun and brash and loud and exciting as the cast strength offerings. So while it is a good 21 year old, I don't think it's great. And also, you know, anytime we're talking about an older whiskey, we also have to consider value. So if you are the type of person who seeks out age, if that's your go to marker for quality, if like maturity and complexity are your top priority, then you're probably going to like this one more than me. But again, there are several whiskeys from this range that I prefer to this, and those are all either half or less than half the price of this bottle. So it's not one that I'm going to buy again. Obviously, that's just my opinion, and I'm definitely not saying this is a bad whiskey. In fact, it is pretty good. But from a value perspective, yeah, it's not great. I think the best way to try this one out would be to maybe get your hands on a sample, or if you're in a whiskey club or a whiskey group, maybe you guys could all split a bottle, try it all together. Uh, but yeah, if you're going in blind and you want to buy a full bottle, not recommended. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's always appreciated. Now, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Benromic 21 here? What were your thoughts? Was it worth it? Was it good value? Uh, and finally, down in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.